Hello and welcome to this evil episode of the Bionicle Inspiration series. And today we're going to be talking all about Makuta, who are the bad guys of the Bionicle universe. And they're pretty cool characters. So we're going to look at what makes a Makuta mock. What sort of stuff could you put into a Makuta if you want to make one? If you want to make a bad guy, what sort of stuff should you look for? What sort of stuff should you do? So let's take a look at some examples and get right on into that, shall we? The first mock we've got today is by Jacobek Val and is called Makuta the Corrupted Beast. So I really love this. This is such a unique take on a Makuta and it's such a unique kind of overall structure and design. This uh, really funny, funky, but menacing looking monster with this one eye and big creepy mouth and this tongue coming out. It's really cool. And and this is why I wanted to talk about this mock. I love it. The idea of, of doing that, creating this really clever, you know, eye design here using this uh, printed dish piece here that has this interesting kind of galaxy energy look to it. Uh, so this very creepy looking eye, this big creepy smile, and the tongue also having this little uh, little tiny mouth on the tip of it, very similar to uh, the Xenomorph from Alien. Very, very cool, very creative. And I think that very much lends itself well to a Makuta doing that, going very kind of over the top, adding anything you can to look very sort of unhuman, un like creepy, monster-like, or villain-like in some fashion, giving them lots of big scary teeth, one eye that looks really scary and menacing, a tongue that has another mouth on it, or big spikes everywhere, tentacles, all sorts of craziness, because that sort of stuff very much speaks volumes of, this is a bad guy, this guy is evil, this is a Makuta. So if that's stuff that you, uh, you, you, you want to you wanna make a Makuta, that sort of stuff to be considering for sure. Love the craftsmanship in this mock, using all of those different tail pieces. Now, I actually talk a lot about these tail pieces before. Let me give you the Bricklink name for them, in case you're like, I know, Ben, I, what are they called? Well, the first one is the Dinosaur Tail Slash Neck Middle Section with Pin. What a great name. That's riveting stuff. Uh, and the next one is Dinosaur Tail End Section. So these two pieces, you see them a fair bit in a lot of the mocks that we see on BIS. And they've been used here to really shape the, the head around the eyes and the arms here. And a few other parts of this mock as well. And they look fantastic. They create this beautiful, awesome, shadow, tentacle, darkness kind of look to this mock. And you can get some beautifully shaped angles and proportions on a mock, making things look super smooth and flowing and just gorgeous. So I definitely recommend using some of those pieces, especially on a Makuta, because they very much lend themselves to, yeah, tentacles and shadow and evil, and it's, it's fitting for the thing and for the general concept of a Makuta. Also here, used a bunch of these flex tube pieces, but these are slightly different flex tube pieces. These are the ones that you've seen a lot of Technic sets used for the pneumatic tubing system that uh, a lot of Technic sets have. So these actually allow air to be transported through them, and they're very, very, very flexible, unlike your regular flex tube, which you can bend and move, but this one is uh, kind of almost a lot, a lot more kind of rubbery. Um, so you can actually attach it to a few more things and uh, definitely shape it with a lot more ease, and it does have this different look to it than your typical flex tube, and it is slightly thicker as well. So again, using some of those pieces would be quite fitting, and you know, I've, I've always sort of said in the past that using some very nice uh, pieces from Technic sets is always a good idea because they are compatible with Bionicle after all. Another thing too we were talking about how a lot of this mock has things that are very kind of unhuman for lack of a better term very uh, out there, very different very alien for a lack of another term there. And that's always something that's clever to do because you take a look at a lot of uh, monsters or villains from like horror movies or things, the kind of scary monsters and stuff. They have multiple different eyes, really long limbs, extra limbs, no legs, a snake tail, all sorts of stuff that you wouldn't see on a typical real life being that is, you know, more human. You know, they have animalistic qualities to them or they have, you know, more things than they should or they're just a little bit too different and out there and odd. And again, that can very much help creating that evil monster-like aspect to this. And so we take a look at this mock here, and it's done that as well. It has limbs that are very long, really long, lanky arms here, and of course no head, and the head is on the body. So seeing different ways that you can very much depart from a typical human aesthetic would very much be something you could consider uh, in really effectively creating that monster evil look. I once said someone asked me, they said, hey, is it okay to put uh, non-proportioned limbs on my mock? And I go, well, of course it's okay. <laughs> you don't need to ask permission for that sort of stuff. Of course it is. It's a great idea. So I very much recommend doing it, especially on a Makuta. Very nicely done. On to the next mock. This is by Unuku and is called Cricker Revamp. 
So I really like this reimagining of Cricker, a really fun, interesting set. And that's always something to do as well. Maybe you want to build a Makuta, but yeah, you're not really inter interested in making any kind of brand new character or nothing's kind of coming to mind. Why not revamp one of the Makuta sets? Because there were a few of them and some really, really cool ones, especially from the Mystica and Fantoka waves. So Unuku's done a really clever concept here, giving this Cricker mock additional arms. Originally, the uh, legs and the arms were just these big sort of spike bits, very much like we see on here. But then Anuku has given him uh, some additional arms that kind of just sort of hang off of the body there. And it creates this really interesting look because it's sort of always permanently raised up above the ground. And his little arms can kind of sit there plotting evil things and doing cool stuff like that. So it's a, a clever way of, you know, slightly changing up the uh, the concept here, but still really fitting in with the original concept, but giving it uh, your own uh, perspective and your own light, which is really cool. Another thing I quite like about this is that some of the little subtle things that actually do quite a lot. We take a look at the mouth design here on Cricker. Uh, Onuku has added some of those Exoforce bad guy robot arms, one of those awesome pieces, uh, and kind of given Cricker a bit of a lower jaw there so that now he can kind of open that up and speak and roar and do all sorts of funky things. It's a clever little thing, very small little addition, but I think it does a lot for that mask and actually works really well in uh, uh, coming up against uh, the mask there. It looks great. And I also quite like as well these front limbs uh, at the very ends of those daggers. He's added in little claws there, kind of like little additional pincers that uh, just add a little extra spike or kind of make it seem that he could kind of pick things up with those claws. I think it's, again, a very slight addition, you know, just working off of the connection points that naturally exist on those pieces, but very effectively adding a bit more to the mock. And it makes a lot of logical sense that he probably would have a little pincer on the end there like that. It's super cool. I like it. Again, little things, but they do quite a lot. Always something to consider. Super cool. On to the next mock. This is a mock by King Marshy and is called Makuta Leshen. So this, of course, is based off of a Leshen, uh, which I believe, well, from this picture, it says that it's from the Witcher game, but uh, I feel like I've seen this kind of general concept in things from across all sorts of different stuff, so I apologize that I don't quite know what this is originally from, but heck, here's one thing that it's from, and it's a really awesome aesthetic, kind of this interesting savage look using all these different bones and cloth and things uh, that kind of uh, decorate it, and even kind of like tree bark and stuff like that. It's creepy, it's savage, it's scary, and it's perfect for a Makuta. So I love that, you know, doing little additions like the cloth, this necklace that almost looks like it's made out of bones and things, and uh, there's you know, cloth on the waist as well as on the torso there, and just the use of that, they look very kind of more primitive, for lack of a better term there. Uh, you know, specifically in the colour scheme, it does look very similar to the, you know, the uh, concept concept art that we were seeing before there uh, from the Leshen from Witcher. So it very much fits in with that aesthetic, it very much does create this more sort of savage, wild, scary monster look. It's very fitting and doing a lot for this mock for sure. Love these big clawed fingers here. Again, we were talking about doing whatever you can to make something look very different from your typical human, of course, you know, your typical human fingers are not that large in scale with the rest of the body here, but when you give him massive, long, imposing claws like that, then he starts to become very unhuman and very scary. And also a very nice work here, recreating this sort of uh, skull here, mainly using system pieces like that, and then these big old antlers here, very similar to Umarak, looks awesome. And on the subject of Umarak, King Marshy was saying that this actually started off as a revamp of Umarak and then just, you know, kind of ended up evolving more into making his own sort of Makuta. Uh, and he ended up entering it into a Makuta contest as well. And I think that's really cool and, and something to always remember. You might be building something and it's not quite going the way you want it to go. And you have this specific vision in mind, but you're not quite reaching it. Well, who says that's a bad thing? Why not reinterpret what you're building and go, well, I was intending on building Umarak, but you know what? This actually kind of works for uh, just a general Makuta guy. Sure, why not? And then you go and tackle an Umarak mock later down the line. It's it's certainly something that's cool. There's kind of happy accidents that you can run into when you're intending on doing one thing, but something else happens. And you could see that as a failure because you go, ah, man, you know, I wanted to do this and I didn't. Well, you could maybe see if there's some opportunity in that obstacle and go, oh, actually, well, why don't I turn this into something else? Why don't I, why don't I twist this around and see what I can do with it. It's always something to consider and it's always something fun that you can do. So give it a go, see how it works. But yeah, overall, really, really nice mock. Love what he's done with everything on this. Very menacing, very scary, and very similar to what it's based off, which is awesome to see. The next mock that we've got is by Crow and is called Finrak the Cacophony. So of course, we've done a whole bunch of Rakshi episodes here on the channel and Rakshi do count as Makuta. They are the sons of Makuta, so it's pretty freaking rad, and it's certainly something you yourself could do, is make a Rakshi, because they are a Makuta, so if you want to make a Makuta, why not tackle a Rakshi? So let's see what Crow has done here on this very unique and very cool Rakshi. 
So, of course, every single Rakshi has their own unique spine and stuff. That was the case with the sets that came out, and that's kind of generally a, a sort of staple rule within the Bionicle lore. Of course, that being said, if you want to make a Rakshi, you don't have to be super unique with it and have it be different from the sets and everything. You could just straight up reuse the green Rakshi's back spines and its uh, its staff pieces there and put it on an entirely different Rakshi, and there's no issue with that. But heck, that's a cool thing about the lore, is finding an interesting way to reimagine the spine or the staff. And Crow's done that here in a really cool way, using axles to create this interesting spine design, and actually using flex tube to connect it. Flex tube is an awesome piece, you can always twist it and bend it in interesting ways, and get some great angles and techniques out of it. So I very much recommend playing around with some, and especially if you're working on a Rakshi and you want to go custom with it, using flex tube there is a perfect way to really achieve uh, a unique custom spine, and also kind of get the angle of the back of a Rakshi. It's, it's perfect. And then the spine here, using some of these uh, interesting kind of Matanui shoulder pieces there. Always really liked that part, and it works very well here for Arakshi stuff. Really like that. Also quite like uh, some of the subtle additions to this, uh, giving him the digigrade leg design, which looks awesome. Again, that's kind of another way of trying to make this mock even more unhuman, is giving him legs that a normal human being does not have. And also adding a jaw to the Rakshi head here, so it kind of looks like he's screaming or spitting acid or something cool. It's a really nice little subtle thing. Very simple thing, but it does a lot for it. I think it's really super cool. And also the color scheme. Beautiful purple and black. Black goes with everything, and it works very nicely with purple. And that's always something to consider. You know, what colors are you going to put on your Makuta? Because while you could make your Makuta pink and, you know, light blues and everything like that, maybe it doesn't quite fit the mock. You know, a Makuta is an evil guy, so you'd probably give him some darker colors, like your blacks, your dark reds, your purples, things like that. Well, you know, what other kind of qualities are associated with someone who's evil? Maybe, you know, greed. What's the color of greed? I would argue the color of greed is gold, because everyone is consumed by money. That's certainly something relating to greed, so maybe some gold on your Makuta could work really well, too. That being said, of course, I just said, you know, pinks and light blues won't work with your Makuta. Prove me wrong, because... Very much, you easily could have some sort of, uh, you know, cute little teddy bear Makuta. And you go, no, he's super adorable, let me give him a hug, and then he eats your face off. So, there's no reason you couldn't put pink or, you know, lighter, happier, pretty colours on a Makuta. It's just, naturally, those colours will work better for a Makuta. So if you're up for the challenge, you could always change that up and use some colours that may not typically work on a, on a Makuta. But definitely one of the easier routes to take is to do that, to use some of those darker colours that very much lend themselves nicely to conveying a more evil look for a mock. Pretty cool. So really nice work there, Crow. You've made an awesome Rakshi. Let's move on to the next mock, which is a mock by Alfie, and this is Makuta Igneous. Now I think this guy is absolutely incredibly cool, and I think this guy very, uh, very effectively represents your typical over-the-top villain. You look at Disney movies, you look at a lot of kind of kids' movies that have villains in them, they tend to be really over-the-top, out there, big, massive characters with loud, booming voices, massive gestures, and just kind of flamboyant in some way, you know? And I think this mock very effectively represents that. And it does so through a lot of different things here. All of these images, his chest is really puffed out. Like he has something to prove. Like he's kind of peacocking a little bit. He's kind of puffing out his chest and going, Oh yeah, look at me. I'm the best. I'm the strongest. I'm super buff and amazing. Look at me. That's really clever character design there. Whether that's just the way that that torso is designed, that it naturally puffs it out, or just posing the mock so that it looks like that is very clever. Typical humans, real life humans, not in the Bionicle world, not made with Lego, real life flesh and bone humans do that. Often they'll puff out their chest just to seem big, strong, and in your face, and owning everything. So kind of transferring that onto a mock here. It's really clever because it's conveying a lot of character behind this mock. So if you can do that, if you can kind of study human uh, body language and uh, pose your mock in that fashion to kind of represent a little bit of extra character there, Something clever to do, or actually physically build the chest, so the chest is kind of puffing out a little bit like that, or, you know, other aspects of the monk, you know, posing them or building them in a certain fashion to, you know, kind of communicate something. Something to think about, something really clever. We were talking before about the digigrade leg designs here, very much representing kind of like devils, uh, you know, a lot of depictions of the devil can be uh, shown having that kind of goat-like leg design like that. Uh, again, very fitting for a very over-the-top evil character. We were talking about gold before being very fitting for a colour scheme, the gold and the black here, two very kind of sinister colours like that, works really well. These big looming wings just sort of spreading out everywhere, kind of very symbolic of, you know, how an evil person can have a lot of power and reach across, you know, worlds or universes or 
even just a small place, but still have a lot of reach in that area. I quite like that. Or even just the idea that that evil is spreading everywhere. It's kind of almost sort of embodied in those wings because they are massive and going everywhere and they're huge. Uh, so very reflective of that, which is awesome. Also, just in general, the grand pose that he has. I was talking about the way the chest is posed, of course, but you also take a look at the arms. It looks like this guy is laughing out this bellowing evil laugh. It would be echoing through his evil lair, and even the good guys can hear it who are, you know, miles away. So stuff like that, posing, the way things are built, the color scheme, the legs, the size of things, they can communicate quite a lot of stuff. It's stuff that's not always easy to put into a bionicle, but if you can do it, do it right, ooh, then you make something really, really special. And that's super cool. And Alfie, you've done a great job of conveying all of that. Really like it. Also really cool to see that G2 Makuta mask being used here. We never really had, you know, a body to put that on. It kind of just came separate. You could put it on Umarak and stuff like that or a few other things, sure. But uh, actually giving it a nice home here and putting it on actual Makuta is a, a clever idea. It looks really cool. So great to see that on here. I love it. On to the second last mock in this episode. And this is by Lord Kodrak. Very sinister and evil name. Coat racks are the real enemy. Be wary of them. But this mock is super cool. Love this head design. Uh, he was saying actually that Dr. Scorpion X made that head design. He included that in the email there. Always cool to give a bit of credit where credit is due. Very nice. But I love that head design. I think it does a lot for this mock. And that's always something to do. You know, maybe you can uh, kind of just riff off of someone else's head design and put that on your mock or riff off someone's weapon or arm or foot or torso design and then build an entirely new mock around that. What's wrong with that? Nothing. As long as you credit them and you know, let it be known that, hey, I, I got this design off of them. Could be a really good stimulus for a mock. And I, you know, I definitely think this is a, a very good stimulus for this mock. This head design looks sort of very Minotaur-like. Big skull-like looking kind of interesting design here. Big old horns, everything like that. Really kind of helps to give this sort of sinister evil Makuta-like look to this mock. I don't think I said the name of this guy. This is Makuta Vilgarax, Guardian of Kratanui. My bad. But yeah. This is a great mock, really love his weapons, you know, kind of giving them flames and stuff like that. Very fitting, very cool. This is a very CCBS heavy mock, which is always great to see. You know, some people's their collections are more filled with CCBS, but you know, maybe, maybe you're sitting there and you're going, ah oh, man, I wish I had more Bionicle parts, then I could make something. Well, this mock here is a brilliant example of how having basically, you know, mainly just purely CCBS, you can still make a fantastic looking evil big Makuta mock. Super cool. And again, we were talking about colors before, a lot of these colors are quite fitting, you know, darker colors, these trans uh, oranges here as well, and little bits of silver, yeah, they're kind of darker colors, and the, the trans red kind of looking like fire, and fire can often be associated with sort of more evil, and depths, and hell, and all sorts of interesting stuff like that, so it is quite fitting for a Makuta here, so perfect color choices, really like what you've done. On to the final mock, this is a very different one, but a really good one, this is also by Alfie, second mock by him, but thought I just had to include this because this is so unique and so different and yeah you know, I was talking before about how there's some traditions you can kind of follow with some Makuta here you know sticking to certain colors and doing uh you know characters that are very you know unhuman like and very monster focused and you know taking a, a lot of inspiration from those aspects of things but then you get this guy and he is a human straight up he's got white and yellow big bright colors little tiny 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 bit of black and that's it. And yet he does look so evil, right? I told you before, you can break all these rules and it still can work depending on how well you do it. And I love this because this guy has this awesome, I think I forgot to say the name again. Jeez, man, what's going on? This is Makuta, the evil genius. But he does have this sort of awesome mad scientist look to him. And I love that. And that's so effectively conveyed with the color blocking here. All of the white on this very much resembling some kind of a lab coat, just the way it's flowing down like this, using some of those Technic panel pieces to really effectively create that lab coat. He's got these big yellow gloves, which all the yellow is just concentrated on the arm, the, uh, the arms and the hands there, so it looks very, very much like some gloves. And all the silver just being concentrated on the, uh, the legs here, very much looks like he's wearing some boots. Very nicely done. Very cool. Very effectively communicating this kind of mad scientist look, and I love it. And two other little details that I love, the devil's in the details here. The little mustache that he's got here, using one of those minifigure beard pieces. And then giving him some goggles, again, very much connecting and creating that evil scientist look and being pretty much perfect at conveying that. And again, such a departure from what we were seeing before, but it fits it so perfectly well. So do that. Look to, look to um, some of your, you know, pop culture things or whatever, and, and study some of the villains. Some of them are your typical, like, Disney villains, like I was saying, where they're very over-the-top and sinister-looking, and some of them are mad scientists, and some of them are just a dude in a suit, or some of them is just some sweaty guy in his basement, you know? 
Villains come in all shapes and sizes, and so you could, of course, build your villain Makuta in any shape and size as well, and there's honestly nothing wrong with that. Do a bit of research, see what you can find, study your villains, take reference from some of your favourite villains, and see what sort of aspects you can put into your Makuta mocks. Pretty cool. So if you want to see some of your own mocks in future episodes of the Bionicle Inspiration series, you can, and you can uh, submit them through the email that you're currently seeing on your screen. Send me an email with some pictures, some information, anything else you want to include, and I'll put it in the list, and one day it'll appear in either a traditional Bionicle Inspiration series episode, if it fits one of the themes that I'm planning on doing, or one of the themes that you suggest as well, or it'll appear on a BIS for the fans, or BIS fan submitted mocks episode. So one day it'll be on, might take a little bit, but one day it will, I promise. Otherwise, be sure to check the links in the description to the mocks that you saw in today's episode. Everyone built some fantastic stuff. You should be sure to check out some of the other fantastic things they've made. They're talented builders and they deserve some love. And also some of my social media links are there too if you're interested. But no one's going to force you to look at them. Anyway, that's it for this episode. Hope you enjoyed it and hope you're inspired to build something cool. If you are, let me know. Would love to see what you've made. Happy building. Bye for now.